enhanced necrotizing enterocolitis is a life-threatening disease, uh, premature infants. Is there any hope that it can be prevented, or do we have better treatment strategies? It is indeed um, a life-threatening disease. It uh, occurs in especially very young, premature infants. Um, there are some promising strategies. One is um, to try and have as many kids on own mother's milk. I think, that it, I think that is the major issue, own mother's milk. And then the second one is uh, try to prevent it with the use of probiotics. Although we don't know exactly which strain and which dose of probiotics are to be used. Um, so the breast milk uh, preventive strategy is something which has been known for a long time. The probiotics is something which is more new. Do you think that there is enough evidence-based um, uh, medicine, let's say it that way, or is it just a trial and error what people are doing? Well, by now, and now we talk early 2013, there are more than 4,000 infants in the different trials. Um, do we know enough? Well, we do know that um, on average there's a huge effect of the use of probiotics. However, there's also it's, it's like with antibiotics. We know that antibiotics work against infections. But we also do need to know which antibiotics we have to use at what dose at a certain stage. And that's where we are with probiotics. We know it's, it's working, but we don't know which one we should use because there are also counter effects. We did some animal studies, actually, in newborn piglets, that there were more cases of necrotizing enterocolitis with certain strains. And we have, of course, the experience in the Netherlands with the ProPatria trial with acute pancreatitis, where they administered a whole series of probiotics to very severely ill adult patients and there the mortality was even higher. So although it's one of the best studied recent interventions in neonatology, we're still not at that level that I can say we should routinely use this and this and this strain in neonatal intensive care. Are there commercial preparations of probiotics which you would consider safe today? Um, well, it, it depends on uh, where you live, because, for instance, in my country, they're not allowed. So it's not allowed to use probiotics in, in neonatal intensive care, so we have to have a specific permit to try to get them in. Um, there are some uh, that seems to be safe. Um, but there are not that many different studies that looked at uh, uh, the identical protocol in which they were administered to patients. And do you have uh, an idea when, uh, when will the safety be established? You know, you, have, you were mentioning that there are 4,000 infants in, in trials, so it can't take too long if the studies are so big. No, I, I guess in the next few years we will know which strain to, will be best to use. Um, the approach would be and is, is to look at the first studies, which are the most potent bacteria that can be used, and then repeat the studies and do a dose finding effects, etc., and time when it should be started. And I guess those results will be available in the next two or three years, and then the strategy still will be own mother's milk first, then maybe we can have a positive effect of donor human milk on the incidence of, uh, of um, 
of, of neck, necrotizing enterocolitis, and then thirdly, use probiotics. Uh, this uh, uh, leads me on to the next question. In breast milk, milk from their own mother, there are probiotics. Right. So the effect might be the probiotics from mother's milk, but the heat-treated donor's milk doesn't have live bacteria in it. So can you expect from a heat-treated uh, human milk that it's also effective in terms of prevention? It, it's an excellent question. We don't know. There are uh, the the pathogenesis of necrotizing enterocolitis is not, of course, completely understood yet. So is it related to the wrong bacteria? Is it immune-mediated uh, disease? Is it an effect of cow's milk protein that is uh, causing this? So is it just by giving donor milk, even if, if it is heat-treated, is still preventive on the development of neck? Or are there factors in human milk, either bacteria or immune modulating uh, substances that are in human milk, are those causing uh, 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 a lower incidence of neck? We don't know. We need the studies, but the studies are currently uh, um, conducted. But uh, final question, those study centers which are using probiotics and have been using probiotics during the last two, three years, they all consistently report that necrotizing enterocolitis is going down? Yeah, uh, so the, the, the anecdotal uh, data are that um, some humans even claim that they don't see necrotizing enterocolitis at all anymore. But we also know that necrotizing enterocolitis is a disease that goes up and down in incidence. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, in my own unit, when I was still a student, <laughs> um, we had seven years no necrotizing enterocolitis. And it was thought that it was related to a specific parental uh, management we were doing at that time. And it was published, and a month later, there were five cases of necrotizing enterocolitis. So it goes up and down. There, has, there is a relationship with infections and with certain strains of bacteria. Uh, so it can be coincidence. But on the other hand, an effect in 4,000 infants is not something that you should neglect. OK, let's wait for the outcome of those studies in order to help the premise who need it so urgently. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.